A most unusual cheese dish and some Irish silver go under the hammer in Flongit at 3.30 here on BBC Two. First, remembering a film star in the family at the country house. After his recent marriage, Lord Howland and his new bride Louise have some news that the whole estate has been waiting for. We're incredibly lucky we got married in October and hopefully come July, and I'm sure people will instantly start doing their maths. Um, we are hoping to have um, number one daughter or son on the scene. And after 28 years at Woburn Abbey, Lord and Lady Tavistock are preparing to move out and into a house on the edge of the estate in Woburn Village. Are you looking forward to moving out of the Abbey? Looking forward, no. Why not? Because I'm not. Why? I'm looking forward to doing the project, but I'm not sure that I really am looking forward to moving in, no. Lord Tavistock has formally handed over the running of the entire 13,000-acre Woburn estate to his son Andrew, Lord Howland. Lord and Lady Howland and the new baby will move into the abbey when his parents' house in the village is renovated and extended. How do you think your son Lord Howland is coping with taking over here? I think he's coping. Mind you, he's been in it for a long, long time. Um, he certainly should know how to do it because let's face it, it's almost grown up with it. When I took over, my father said, right, it's up to you to run, I'm going to go, bye-bye. And I literally had a three or four days' notice, um, and that was it. So it's been easier for Lord Howland, has it, your son? Dramatically easier, dramatically easier, because this team knows what it's all about. And is it difficult for you, Lord Tavistock, having to... To take a back seat? No, a... not at all, not at all. I can't wait to have a back seat. How's Lady Tavistock adjusting to handing over things? Is she um, finding it hard moving out? Very hard, very, very hard. She not, I mean, she doesn't like handing over, she never likes handing over anything. What's the worst bit about it all? Well, oh, the worst bit is the thing of, of feeling that I'll be so close, but that I mustn't, that I don't want, I mustn't go there. Yes, it is that I mustn't go there. But I don't want them to be hurt that, I do, that I'm doing that. I don't want them to think, oh, God, Mummy's upset and innocent. I'm not. It's just that I've got to, I've got to come to terms with it myself, and then I'll be fine. You've been very happy together, the two of you, in the Abbey. One's had a couple of problems, but otherwise we've led a very, very happy life indeed. It couldn't have been easier to do. Brilliant. For that, I will be grateful to her forever. Inside the Abbey is a treasure house of priceless paintings, furniture and antiques. In one of the two 18th century stable blocks behind the main house, the family have created one of the country's finest and largest antique centres as a showpiece for dealers from all over Britain. Being able to pop in and find a bargain is one of the perks of living at Woburn. And today, Lord and Lady Howland are looking to replace some of the things his parents will take with them when they move from the Abbey. It looks a lot better with all these pictures and these showcases now, doesn't it? It does. It looks as if there are a lot more things... ..around. These chairs are very pretty. Are they a little bit... They're a bit delicate, delicate for me, darling, are I think. They? I thought they might be. They're very expensive, too. Well, for that good. rather wonderful glass bowl, yes. Something hot from you put on it. Perhaps that's a good idea. Huh? That's a good idea, to put a yeah. hot pan. Yeah. So we'll take those. We're having all of those. Great. Put those down there. Let's not forget those. What do you think of that mirror, darling? Over here, I think that's very nice. It's not Pretty really useful. If I can squeeze through. I wonder how old it is. 
Here you are. Yeah. Nineteenth century mahogany swing mirror. I think it's the sort of thing we're going to need. It's nice big. It's good, nice big mirror. Good for a dressing room or something, isn't it? Yeah. It'd be very nice. Right. I'm taking the tag for that one. And we'll see, Mr. Howe. <laughs> see what he can do on that one. <clears throat> Expensive wandering around here. What are you looking out for particularly today, Lord H? <laughs> Lots of knickknacks, I think. Um, the mother loves coming up here shopping when, you know, I think she just likes to come and see, see what's, you know, in stock. So she's quite a big buyer of things. Things have been a bit hectic for you two, haven't they? Engaged, married, junior in about, in under, just over 12 months. So, um, no hanging around, but when you're as old as we are, we can't afford to hang around. <laughs> The estate the Howlands are taking over has to be run extremely efficiently in order to survive. For example, today the stud staff are rotating cattle that have fertilised and grazed a paddock on one part of the estate to another. Once the cattle have moved, the empty paddocks will be ready for use by the new young foals. It's a delicate process and quite a battle to keep the cattle in order as they're taken through the park and its herds of wild deer. Like a scene out of Rawhide. It is a little bit. <laughs> I think you enjoyed it. Well, it's a little bit of excitement. We have had them all over the place in the pond. We had one go for a swim one year. I'm surprised Lady Tavistock's not down here to lend a hand. No, 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 she no. normally would, wouldn't she? Her ladyship's best where she is today when we're, do when we're doing this. Oh, is she? Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> we're, best, we're best left to her own on this one. <laughs> the stud is Lady T's passion. It's the only part of the estate that will remain hers after the handover and the main reason why she and Lord T need to stay living close by. These are all last year's foals. Remember the little ones you saw last year? They're now teenagers, and by this autumn, they'll either go to the sales or into training. And the foal we specifically saw last year was this one, which is myself, foal, Ego. And she's she was very frisky, wasn't she? I remember. Yes, but you saw her when she was about two days old. Well, she's now a proper teenager. How much is she worth? If you took her to a sale, yeah. I suppose she'd make half a million. This one? That one. Half a million pounds? Yes. You wouldn't sell her anyway, would you? I don't think so, no. Somebody said to me the other day, and I'd never thought about it, there's sort of two kinds of people who have racehorses. Some people breed to race, and other people race to breed. And I thought, what an extraordinary thing to say. And then I realised they were absolutely... And he said, and you race to breed, and I do. I look at a filly like this and I think, well, she's got to go to the race course and she's got to win certain races and then she's going to be a wonderful broodmare. But I'm not thinking really about the racing. It's when really? she's back it's as the, a mummy. It's the future. You're I can't wait for her to be back as a mummy. She's just got to go and prove that she's top class before she's a mummy. Will you stop eating me? <laughs> what is it about horses that you love so much? I feel very proud and comfortable with them. Proud to have bred them, comfortable with them. The humble, it's humbling when you have, when you see a horse who, who, I mean, whether he's a show jumper or a dressage horse, when a horse is performing really well, that's when they're very humbling. Are you going to win the Queen Mary next year? That's what you've got to try and do. You've got to be the first of the next generation to win the Queen Mary. As a well-known figure, Lady T receives a huge and diverse mailbag. She replies to every letter personally. What have you got there, Lady T? I've got the most... Oh, it's the most wonderful letter. Let me read it to you. Dear Lady Tavistock, way back in the early 1930s, I belonged to a secret society for film fans. We each paid just one half penny a week to buy Picturegoer, the film magazine of the day. 
I was very much surprised to read in a Sunday Express magazine that your mother was the very beautiful Joan Barry, who was at that time my own very favourite actress, and one of my most treasured possessions is an autographed photograph of her. For the time being, I have been reluctant to part with it, but I feel now that I would very much like to let you have it, even if only to add to the treasures in Woburn Abbey. Yours faithfully, Catherine Heaton. I hate to tell you that I am now in my early 80s, 1932-33 is quite a long time ago. And look at the that? beautiful writing. I mean, nobody writes like that anymore. Anyway, I got this letter and I don't know, it was, it was, it made me sort of quite, well, it, it was just a funny feeling because I thought, you know, how much my mother would have really loved me to receive that letter. Anyway, I rang her up and we spoke and I said, would she like, instead of posting it to me, because I would absolutely love to have it, but I'd also love to meet her. And I said, how would it sound to you if we sent a car up to fetch you and you came down here for lunch and gave me the picture? And she said, oh, that would be wonderful. She said, but I live with my widowed sister. Would she be able to come too? And so I said, of course. Lady T was so impressed by the letter, she decided to give the two film fans of her mother's lunch in none other than Woburn's famous Venetian room. With the birth of the baby imminent, Lady Howland is still determined to make regular visits to her favourite part of the estate, the safari park. Today, she's brought along her niece, Xenia. OK, should we wash him? Yes. OK. You do this every morning? Yep, every single day, even Christmas Day, New Year's Day, every single day. So they're not, do, you think, do you think they enjoy it? Yeah, he's probably the, one like of the, the favourite times of the day, yeah. How long have you got to go now, Lady Howland? Um, about three weeks. So not long. Not long. And I'm sort of getting slightly more organised about um, getting a nursery ready. So it'll be great. Cousin for Xenia. Xenia, would you like to have a little boy or a girl, cousin? A little boy, would you? A lot of first-timers are nervous, but you seem incredibly relaxed. Yes, we're looking forward to it. I think our lives will change, but it's a new adventure and a new phase, so we are. We're looking forward to it. That's the same as that one, isn't it? So she was like, like a, a really big star. Everybody in England would have heard of her. Oh, huge. In the 30s. Look at that. Stunning I eyes. love the way they backlit photographs. Look at that fluffy hair. Did you never think of going on the stage yourself? Yes. You did? Yes. And what happened? My husband, sitting over there. What? Quite rightly. I, read, I was... Josh, did you ever hear of Joshua Logan? No. Yes, of course you did. Of course you did. One of the great directors. Don't tell me you've never heard of Joshua Logan. You're a bit older than me, don't forget. Not much, but a little bit. Well, anyway, Joshua Logan was, if you check him up, he was big stuff. Yeah. And I was asked to read for a part, and you will now laugh, because it was the world of Susie Wong. Remember Chinese prostitute? The Chinese prostitute, <laughs> indeed, yes. And I got it. So what happened? Why aren't you a big star? I told Robin, and he said, that's absolutely wonderful and thrilled for you, darling. But if you do that, then we will never get married. But I quite understand if you want to. And it was quite a simple decision after that, because I think it would have been a roller coaster. I don't think I'm strong enough to have been able to cope with all the different pressures. And also, I don't think I'd have wanted that sort of life. I'm much happier to fold a mare. <laughs> and when you read about Julia Roberts, who's, a, to me, a captivating actress, Absolutely. and she cannot get her own life happy. None because, of them can, can no, they? No, but it so... must be very hard, because you have this huge adulation. I mean, if you're a man, it's every woman sitting there thinks, oh, if only he was mine. And if you're a woman, it's the men thinking, oh, I'd like, you know. So you have that sort of adulation persona, and then you have to go back and, I don't know, cook the supper or make your bed or whatever, and lead a normal life. And I think the interrelation of one with the other must be almost impossible, because you can't be both. And I don't look back and think, oh, what a terrible mistake, because I know if I'd gone into that world, I would now if I was still alive, even, I wouldn't be a very happy person. Almost three weeks later, when Lady Howland felt the first pangs of labour, she was accompanied by Lord Howland and admitted to the famous Portland Hospital in London. 
Since they've been married, Lord and Lady H have been living in Lord Howland's old bachelor house on the estate, where everything is ready for the new arrival. Now their butler, Robert, is off to pick up a new member of staff. The Howlands have employed a maternity nurse, Nanny Pat, who will look after the baby for its first few months. Thanks, That's Robert. Yeah. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. Yeah. Yeah. A cup of tea on the train? No, I don't like British oh. tea, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> you better get the kettle on when we get yes, back. Yes, please. Then. I had a freaking chocolate on there once and it was grotesque. Oh, was it? Oh, well, I hope you like my tea because you're here for a couple well, of minutes. So. I hope so, After a thorough renovation at a specialist company, Lord Howland's 40-year-old Milson Pram is back in readiness for the big day. However, despite being adorned with Lord Howland's personal crest, no one knows if the baby will be a boy or a girl. Today is the day film fan Miss Catherine Heaton and her sister arrive for their special lunch. Now, are you, are you Miss Heaton? Yes, yes. I suddenly realised. I'd love to. I suddenly realised you drove up. I, I thought, I wonder which one's Catherine, no, which one's her sister. No, 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 no. Hello. Oh, and the detail. Oh, and the extraordinary yeah. thing She's... was, they went from the artist studio because one of Robin's ancestors went to Venice and went to Canaletto Studio, and bought them. So they've never been anywhere, anywhere else. But, yeah. in, well, in, they in went to London, London yeah. didn't they? Yes. But they've only been with your family. That's right. After lunch, it was time for Lady T to accept the treasured 70-year-old signed photograph of her mother, Joan Barry. That is definitely her writing. Oh, God, I'm so glad. lovely. Yes. And the envelope and the whole thing. Isn't that amazing? Look at the stamp. Yes, <laughs> half penny. God, half penny. Yes, you're <laughs> joking. Yes, but a different me. king, a king that we didn't know. You see, he wasn't king when we... Look. It wasn't all right. Uh, <laughs> George, the... Uh, George the... Fifth. Fifth. George the Fifth, yes. I mean, you know, she'd realise when she signed that that one day a child she didn't know she was going to have would have it. I think that's really wonderful. Could I just ask you both, why was she so special to you, Joan Barrett? Just because she was so beautiful. I think as children you, you make lovely ladies your idol. What sort of a day have you had here? Oh, oh it's been wonderful. It oh, we've loved every minute of it. Yes, yes we, we have. have. Yes. Very nice. And what about having lunch in the famous Canaletto oh. room? Oh, it was out of this world. It was a lovely luncheon too. I really it enjoyed great, it. good yes. food, wasn't it? There is the one with no sugar, so that's not living here. This is the one with two sugars. I'm so thrilled that it's in the right Hugely place. appreciated. I'm so glad, yes. I think that's extraordinary. Amazing. Pretty lady. That's really oh, lovely. Amazing. At 2 a.m. on Monday the 9th of July, the first baby to be born into the family for over 26 years arrived. What's uh, happened? Well, Lord and Lady Howland have, have a, new, a brand new daughter. A daughter? Outstanding, huh? Excellent. Excellent. Yes. And when, when was she born? Born a couple of hours ago in, uh, in London, the Portland Hospital. Um, and all we know is it's uh, mother and daughter are doing well and it's a, it's a little girl. And I forgot to ask the questions that you're supposed to ask on things. About the weight, and, weight and size that. and all that stuff. So how did the news get it? Lord Allen phoned to phone security, and it's just come through to the office, which is great. Mm. So it's, uh, oh, it's excellent news. Afternoon, Ms. Evan, how are you? Very well, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Here's your tea. Celebratory cup of tea. Brilliant. Oh, the glories of the desk. So you were brave enough to be there at the birth, Lord Howland? Yeah, we got into hospital at sort of one o'clock um, and I was sort of in and out and things. I was there for the last 
um, three hours, um, apart from the odd um, cigarette run outside. <laughs> and it was, it's tough. I mean, you see, you know, someone you love going through fear, pain, um, and then how that is instantly forgotten as soon as you hear a scream. I mean, you know, the smile on Louise's face was wonderful and, you know, nature is miraculous and it was amazing. You've got a new nanny installed. We've got a maternity nurse who's helping teach the first-time parents how not to make too many mistakes. She just seems wonderful, called Nanny Pat, and she's helped a few friends of Louise's before. And hopefully she'll be with us for three months, but she's taking a two-week break sometime, so maybe we'll be down to hands-on parents and hope to not make too many mistakes. You look very well after the rigours of childbirth. It actually wasn't as bad as I expected. I got a little bit nervous about it, um, but I suppose it was the unknown. And how long was labour? Nine hours. I had a painkiller. Um, I've got one or two friends who've done it totally naturally, but I wasn't brave enough to do that. Um, so I had an epidural. And no, it, there weren't any complications. Have you bought these or are these uh, gifts? No, she's people? been very spoiled. She's been sent some lovely things to wear, um, but some of them are a little bit... She'll need to grow into them. She, she's not quite um, big enough for them. But that's great because there's, there's um, for instance, this, which is just... I think it's called a sleeping bag. I'm all new to this, so... Um, which I think she'll most probably fit into in about a month's time. <laughs> but it'd be ideal for the winter because she can kick her legs um, and she won't kick all the... The sheets off her bed. That looks absolutely in her superb, car. doesn't it? I've never seen anything like that before. Yes. It's wonderful. So, uh, so that I'm sure she'll absolutely love. Well, many congratulations. She's a very pretty baby. Thank you. Well, we think she's just heaven. We just think she's absolute heaven, um, and we're very, very lucky. So, uh, let's hope that she stays that way. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll have our arguments in time to come. But at the moment, she's as good as gold. Okay. My friend. Come on, my big one. Oh, have you got tummy ache? Have you got tummy ache? Oh, don't cry. It's all right. Shh, 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 shh. It's OK, baby. It's OK, baby. How's the baby coming along, Nanny Pat? She's very well. She's a very good girl. Now, she still hasn't got a name. Afraid Pat, not. They can't agree on one, I'm afraid. What are the front runners? Do you know? Um, I got Lucy. Um, now what else? Georgiana, because I think that's a family name. But uh, Daddy and Mummy can't agree. And how are Lord and Lady Howland coping with being new parents? I think they're doing very well. I really do. They're loving it, enjoying it, I think. And how is Lord Howland at changing the nappies and all that? Oh, I don't think he's done that yet. <laughs> oh, he hasn't done it? <laughs> no, not to my knowledge. I do say to him, is a, you know, how about that? And I think he runs a mile. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and how are you settling into this estate? Well, I'm doing very well. <laughs> Considering it's um, it's all country and I'm a town girl, so I think I'm doing pretty well. And how many yeah. babies have you had? Oh, I've mean, not had, but looked after. Oh. Yeah, I've had so many. Hundreds. Maybe, maybe about a hundred. A hundred yeah, babies. You've probably, I should think so. So by you know now. what you're doing. I hope pack. so. I hope so. <laughs> after three weeks, the new baby still has no name, and everyone on the estate is wondering what she'll be called. What do I think the name's going to be? Hmm. Francis. I do. Hmm. Do you think well, I don't know if there's a regal name, something that'll fit. Mm. You know, you've actually no idea. Nobody has any idea. Nobody's got any idea. And certainly I haven't got any idea. People think I might have, but I haven't. Not a clue. Not a clue. But... It's, it's an important event, this, isn't it, the birth of oh, the, yes. the baby? Oh, yes. It's not Very like important. just any old baby, is it? In, in no. A, no, of course not. Place. Of course not. We've been waiting for Ryan for a long while, haven't we? Will the next one be a boy? Is that important? I personally don't see why a girl can't inherit. One could say we've been run by a lady for the last few years. Diane, what would you like the baby to be called? Well, I like Georgiana, but um, that's only a personal preference, and I'm sure it won't be the one. 
Grant, what's the news on the name of the baby? Do we know? Um, no name yet. No name yet? No. What do you think the name should be? When you look at some of the, the portraits of their ancestors, there's some nice names, isn't there? Um, Mary, look, Mary Dutch of Bedford. Um, who else was there? Um, Gertrud was one of them. Um, they've just they've got some really nice names. What do, what do you, what, what's the view amongst the stud staff about what the name should be? A name that can't be shortened. I mean, Charlotte can be shortened. That's, yeah, that's that is it. actually I quite, a, like, a quite a name I like. I quite like Elizabeth. But again, that can be yeah, shortened yeah, to Liz, and I don't like Liz. <laughs> but it's good for the royals. It, it is. Yeah. It's nice. He does, I mean, it's great that Lord H has got married and there's a baby as well. And, you know, it's this new generation. Your new granddaughter, has she been named yet? Has she got a name? You won't believe it. Still no name at all. Still Nothing. No name. Why can't they decide? You tell me. I mean, it's such an easy thing to do. The entire estate is invited to meet the baby for the first time. And rumour has it that her name is to be announced at long last. But I'd just like to start off by thanking you all for coming. I'm sure that a few of you are keen to rush home and relax. On a wonderfully exciting note, we have a new member of the family um, <laughs> here this evening. And if my wife is around somewhere and she still has the same name as she had this morning, oh, she yeah. does at last have a name. <laughs> She's three weeks old today, and she is called, correct me if I'm wrong at any stage, darling, she is called... <laughs> Alexandra Lucy Clare. Russell. <laughs> Clare, her third name was Daddy's mother's name. Sadly, I never met her, but hopefully she will live on through our daughter. So have a hope you enjoy yourselves this evening. And again, a big, big thank you, and thank you for coming. Alexandra. Apparently. And what do you think? I think that's nice, as long as she's never called Alex. Well, she's bound to be called Alex. No, never. The diminutive of Alexandra is really Sasha or Saskia. It's a so Russian name. It should be Alexandra. No, I think Sasha, probably. Sasha. Well. And she looks sublimely unaware of all this fuss, doesn't she? She screamed when he announced her name. <laughs> so the arguments are over. The discussions are finalised. <laughs> the arguments are over. No arguments. No arguments. Why Alexandra? Just we both liked it. Um, and, you know, it'll be Alexandra. We'll have to come up with a nickname for it. It's a bit of a mouthful to start with. Um, but maybe Alexandra, when she's naughty, it sounds quite stern. Yes, very stern. <laughs> but Alex, for short, and there? Possibly. Yeah. And no one knew. I really the parents didn't, that the that parents didn't know before, through. because I, I just thought we might you. as well just spring it in, and then we get all the complaints afterwards. <laughs> I don't think you're getting the complaints. <laughs> no way, no way. Not yet. No, I think people were starting a pool. A couple of people said to me, oh, I lost my bet. There uh, was a sweepstake, I gather. Was there? Amongst the state people. <laughs> and, and for an institution like Woven, the new, a new baby, has a special significance, doesn't it? Well, hopefully doesn't it is, a, you know, it's a, another step into the future. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of people that are here tonight hopefully will, you know, know her as she grows up. Absolutely. Um, and now, between all of us, we'll keep her, you know, keep her on the straight and narrow pretty near it. Here we are. Here's the baby. Here we are. Isn't it great? Oh, look at her, she's very happy too. <laughs> look at that. Oh, she's got cute. Fingers, yeah. Oh, she's cute. Yes. Piano yes. player. Yeah. <laughs> In the next programme, an old friend from New Zealand arrives to stay at the Abbey. And the family gathers for Alexandra's christening.